Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to make an arm knit button wrap. This wrap uses three strands of yarn, and here I have Lion Brand's homespun yarn. This is the um, Baroque and Barrington colorways. And I also have going to be using a strand of Wool Ease Thick and Quick, and this is the denim colorway in case you're wondering. And you can use two strands of yarn. Uh, it's up to you and um, any colors you like. And what I would recommend before you begin is to make a little swatch to see if you do like it with two strands or all three strands and how your colors are going to behave together once all the strands are uh, worked together. And um, if you've never arm knit before, I would also encourage you to watch the video called Basics of Arm Knitting. It's a Fiberflux video. It can be found on the Fiberflux YouTube channel. And that will show you how to do a basic slip knot, how to cast on, and how to work a few rows. And in that video, we make a small swatch just to help you master arm knitting. So we're going to be using these three strands for this project. You also need a pair of scissors and a large button and of course your arms and about the button this is a two inch button I wanted to use something very big because arm knitting produces a very large gauge it, it makes sort of a net like appearance so a small button probably won't hold your piece together when you go to wear it and we'll just move our button aside and our scissors aside So we're going to begin by casting on, and what I like to do is just hold the yarn like this, and we're going to measure 10 arm lengths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now this is going to become our tail, so we're going to get it out of the way a little bit. Then, if you're a knitter, and you don't need to be to do this, this is going to seem kind of familiar. This is almost identical to the long tail cast on. So with our tail on the left here, and our working yarn, which is the yarn attached to our yarn balls, off to this side, off to the right, we're going to put a slip knot on our wrist. To make a slip knot, you want to take the yarn and wrap it around all four fingers and hold it with your thumb and index finger. And let that loop fall off. And then you're going to take the strands and go behind the loop so it makes a circle with a line through it. Then reach in with your finger, pull that loop up, and put it on your wrist just like a bracelet. Then you can grab this with your hand and just kind of tighten it on there just like that. Next, we're going to hold our hand up a little bit and let the strands fall down so they make sort of an upside down V like this. Then we're going to cast on 24 stitches. So to cast on, you're going to have your working yarn on the right side and your tail on the left side and you're going to reach in just angle my wrist so you can see. I'm going to reach in with your thumb and your index finger underneath the V. Take your pinky and grab onto the bottom. Open up so it looks like a diamond. Then you're going to bring your hand down and go under your thumb and reach under your index finger and pull that loop through just like that and then put it on your wrist. So we have two stitches cast on. So let's do that a few more times. Reach in with your index finger and your thumb, grab the bottom, open it up so it looks like a diamond, bring your wrist down, go under, up and under your thumb, bring it around and under your index, and through and you'll put that loop right on your wrist. That's three. And then we'll pull a little bit more yarn out. Arm knitting uses lots and lots of yarn. So we're gonna do that again. Come in through with your index finger and your thumb, grab the bottom, open it up to a diamond shape, 
bring your wrist down, go up under your thumb, under your index finger. Put it on your wrist, just like that. <clears throat> so now we have one, two, three, and four stitches. So we need 24 stitches. So we'll go ahead and cast those on. Two, so five. 23. And 24. So we have all 24 stitches on our arm. And it's kind of bulky, but that's okay. We're going to be passing them to the other arm. So this is our working yarn. Again, it's attached to our yarn balls. <clears throat> and to work our first stitch, we're going to take the working yarn and we're going to tuck it into the first loop on our wrist. And then you're going to bring that loop up, put it on your wrist, and then let this loop fall down just like that. And then for that first stitch, I like to just kind of tighten the tail a little bit, tighten the working yarn. Then we're going to take the working yarn and work our next stitch. We're going to tuck it into the next stitch, bring up a loop, put it on your wrist, let that one drop down. Just want to tighten everything up, but not too tight, just to get every, so it's not so loopy and loose. Next, we're going to tuck it into the next loop, bring up a loop, put that loop on your wrist, let this one drop down. Tuck the working yarn into the next loop. Bring up a loop on your wrist. And let that loop drop down. You can already see row two is emerging from our wrist. So we're going to be doing this all the way across until we get to the end. Just like that. Tuck it into the next stitch, pull up a loop, let this loop drop, and make sure you have all three strands. I just dropped the one and didn't even realize it. So we have all three strands, tuck it into the next one. So we're just working our way across. By tucking it into the loop, letting it drop off, putting it on your wrist. So we're just going to keep working all the way across till we get to the end. So we're coming up to the end of our first row, and we've just made it by tucking a loop in, putting that loop on your wrist letting the loop drop from your right hand. Take the working yarn, tuck it into the very last loop on your wrist, bring up that loop, and let it drop off. So now, kind of straighten everything out, row one is complete. And this is the same as making a regular scarf. It's just a lot of stitches, so it can be kind of bulky as you're working. So row one is complete. Now we're going to move on to the next row. To move on to the next row, take your working yarn, tuck it into the first loop, put that loop on your wrist, and let this loop drop off, just like that. Tuck the loop in to the next stitch, Bring up the loop, put it on your wrist, let this loop drop off. Tuck the working yarn into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and let that loop drop off your wrist. So we're going to keep doing that across the whole row. 
So we finished up row two, and it was worked the same as row one. We're just passing it from one wrist to the other. And to continue with your arm knit button wrap, you're just going to keep repeating these rows. So to finish your arm knit button wrap, you're going to work a total of four rows. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, and then four is on our wrist. So to complete your project, you'll then want to bind off. Binding off is similar to working regular rows. And I'll show you how. You take your working yarn and you're going to tuck it into the first stitch on your wrist to bring up that loop. Put it on your other wrist. Tuck the yarn into the next loop on your wrist. Bring up that loop. Put it on your other wrist. Let that loop fall. So now you have two loops on your other wrist. And then you're going to take the loop that's closest to your body and lift it up and over the other loop and off of your hand, just like that. So we've now bound off one stitch. Let's get a little bit more yarn. Then we're going to just keep doing this all the way across. So work the next stitch and lift it. This one up and over and right off of your hand. You can use your other hand to kind of tighten everything up. So just keep doing that all the way across until you run out of stitches it up, over, and off of your hand. Just like that. So you can see it's starting to emerge off of our wrist. So just keep going all the way across. Lift it up, over, and off. Just like that. So we'll just keep doing this all the way across. So we've bound off the whole row almost, and now we have a loop on each wrist. So to finish up your project, you're just going to work the very last stitch, get everything nice and secure, and then you're going to take this loop and just lift it off. So you'll then be left with just one loop on your wrist. So to finish your piece, you're going to grab your scissors and you want a tail that's long enough that you can weave everything in without the ends popping out. You're just going to trim and we'll get our yarn out of the way here. Then you're going to take the strand that you just trimmed and again, I want to just put a little knot in that to keep it from fraying and we'll just trim that later. I like to just do that. And then you're going to take the strand that we just cut and you're going to slip it into that last loop on your wrist. And then you can let it drop off. And then we're going to take it and very gently tighten everything. So then you'll be left with your finished piece. And what I like to do is take a few seconds and just get everything all straightened out. Sometimes when you're working on your projects, everything gets kind of twisty. So just, it's kind of like the hand blocking process. So and then our end here where we cast on, I just like to get everything nice and straight. And I wanted to point out too, just like with the regular knitting when you're using needles, there's a right and a wrong side. This is considered the wrong side because we have our pearl ridges. But if you flip it over, you'll see we've created all these pretty V's and it's a nice loose open net. So I'm just getting everything straightened out. And then we can slide it down and 
sometimes you'll have to pull apart the cast on edge. It can kind of bunch up a little bit. So just make sure everything's nice and straight. Then we can slide this down and we're gonna weave in our ends. So to weave in our ends, we're just, we don't need a special needle or anything like that. We're just gonna use our hands for this part. And we're just gonna take it and go in and out, just like we would with a tapestry needle when you're making um, a project, a knit or crochet project. Just gonna weave it in just as you normally would, except for your hand is the, the needle. So I like to go up one way and then I like to come back down and give it another pass just to make sure everything's really secure. Make sure, unlike I'm doing right now, make sure all three strands are included while weaving. Okay, and then I like to come back down and give it another pass just to make sure it's going to stay put. Okay, and then you can kind of straighten it out, carefully trim the yarn. It's very loopy, so make sure you're not trimming something that you've knit and you're definitely trimming the ends. So let's do the same thing on the other side. We have our tail, and I put a knot in it just to keep it from getting frayed, so we can just trim that knot off. Then we're just gonna weave the ends in the same exact way we did on the other side just by going in like that and then again I like to just come back down and give it another pass just to make sure we have everything in place okay and then when you're done weaving you can carefully trim the end carefully trim the end there <laughs> got caught a little okay and then if you pull it it just kind of disappears so this is the finished piece we've gotten the ends all woven in Next, we're going to take our button, and I have to finish up your arm knit button wrap, and to get the button on there, we're going to just flip it over to the wrong side with the pearl ridges. Remember, the right side has the V's, so we're going to put it on the wrong side, and then we're going to fold it in. Let me slide this stuff down a little. So we're going to fold this part in like this, and this part in just like that and then by doing this you can kind of adjust it a little bit and see where you want your button to be I would like mine to be up in this top corner so we can open that part back up so once you have found the location of where you want your button to be you can sew your button on I just like to kind of place it on there to see how it's gonna look and what I did was, I usually use a matching piece of yarn, but because this yarn is so thick, I pulled apart one of the plies. And you can easily do that by taking your yarn and see how it twists this way, just twist it the opposite way. And then you can take your tapestry needle, kind of get it in between the plies to pull it apart. And just go ahead and pull that apart so you have just one of the plies to use. Then place your button where you would like it to be and take your yarn, because it's still a little thick, give it a nice strong twist and thread your tapestry needle so that you have a little tail like that. Then you're going to take your button and come up from the back 
And I want to um, also mention, be sure that your tapestry needle can pass through these holes. Be Even though this button is huge, I have really tiny little buttonholes in this. So you want to test it out first. But anyway, bring the, the needle up through the back so that there's just a little bit there. And go back down into the other hole. Now everybody's button is going to be a little bit different. So you're going to just do that a few times. Bring it up from the back and see it's already getting a little bit tight. That's okay. We're going to just try and get it in there the best that we can. And then just pull it back through. And you'll want to do this a couple times so everything's nice and secure. And just, I like to pull both of these a little snug just to make sure everything looks nice and neat on the front. Then you're just going to take your yarn, just tie it a few times. Whoops, so my ply came apart there. That's okay. Just tie it a few times. And then you can weave these ends in. I'm just going to trim them just to show you how the button looks. So our button is attached to our piece. Then you can bring this part back over and just use any of these holes when you wear it, just like that. And again, you'll want to use the largest button you can find because the holes that we've created in our gauge are very, very large. And so that completes the arm knit button wrap. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again!